Well, good, uh, good morning, uh, all. Thank you very much for joining us. I'm delighted to be here um, with you today um, to chair and, and I hope facilitate a, a really interesting discussion around whole estate plans and whole farm plans. Um, I've got three, three um, uh, uh, really excellent um, compadres for this. Um, on, my, uh, on my left, I've got Julian Sayers. Um, Julian is a, a Chartered Surveyor and Director of Adkin, um, a, 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 a well-known Oxfordshire um, uh, a practice. Um, he operates across Oxfordshire and, 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 and the surrounding counties and, and, and wherever the opportunity takes him, really. Um, he's been in the business for 38 years, advising farmers and landowners on a wide range of matters um, related to the occupation and ownership of rural property. Um, and has got very involved over that time um, in a diverse range of projects, um, including regular preparation of whole farm and whole estate plans of, of all forms and natures. Um, and, and thank you, Julian, very much for being with us. Um, Ed Barnston um, is principal of the Barnston Estate in Cheshire. Um, Ed's had a fascinating um, uh, background of career of, of, of um, being in the armed services, being in the in the in the sort of financial services, and now and now in the stewardship and landed estate uh, management um, sector, um, he's a 2019 Nuffield Farming Scholar, um, whose whose um, uh, study was on uh, rural estates um, um, uh, benchmarking for success, um, and he is, I'm delighted to say, a, a keen advocate of of whole farm and whole estate plans. Um, and Carl McConville is um, National Director of Landed Estates for Barclays Bank. Um, uh, Carl is and his team, um, and he tells me he's got 11 in his team now, which is, which is an exceptional resource available to landed estates and, and agri businesses. And Carl and his team form part of the wider agriculture group within Barclays, which is led by our friend um, Mark Southern. And we're very, very pleased that Barclays have, have made Carl available to us today to give perhaps a slightly different perspective from um, agent, consultant and estate principal. So Carl, thank you very much for joining us and welcome to you. Um, uh, I'm sure many of you have, have, have engaged in these roundtables um, up to now um, and, uh, and are familiar with the, with, 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 with the way they've been working. Um, we've got a number of, 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 of sort of headline questions that we might work through, but we are very keen to hear from, from you. Um, and we, we are ready and willing to sort of respond to our agenda and our program to pick up points and questions being raised um, um, from, from any of you uh, at any point during, during, the, during the round table. Whilst obviously the only the four of us are speaking, we do hope we can bring your voices into the conversation as well as best we can. Um, uh, in, order to, in order to engage in the conversation, use the Q&A function um, uh, which you'll find if you roll your, your um, uh, mouse uh, down to the bottom of your screen, use, find the Q&A function and send us any comments or any questions that you might like. And we will do our best as a, as a group of um, maybe slightly over 30s um, to multitask um, and, and, and pick those up and deal with them as, as, as they come in. Um, uh, and so I think um, without more ado, um, I'm going to start the ball rolling. Um, the purpose, I think, of this is, is we really wanted to, 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 I think, build all of our own awarenesses about whole estate plan, the breadth of application and the opportunities that, 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 that they might apply either at estate scale, farm scale, or perhaps another, another um, combination of, 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 of scales, um, and really to sort of test, and test each other and tease out, tease out our thoughts. Um, which we hope you'll find interesting. So the first question I, I'm going to pose, and I'm going to start, Ed, if I might, with you, um, is, is why might you as an estate principal and estate manager want to engage in a whole estate planning process in the first place? What's in it for you? What, what do you see the, the return on investment as being? Yeah, gosh, that's a, that's a very broad question, Rob, to, to throw me in at the deep end. Um, I, I suppose I would start, Rob, by answering that over the last 18 months, I've been privileged to uh, have visited over six countries um, through my Nuffield Farming Scholarship travels uh, and seen about one and a half million acres, predominantly in private ownership uh, of, of large farms and estates um, around the world. And consistently, it was very obvious that there were tremendous rural businesses that were thriving 
um, because they had some form of a whole estate plan. Now they called it an asset management plan, a rural plan, a whole estate plan. Aside from the nomenclature, uh, the approach was exactly the same. So one thing I took home uh, with me is this idea of trying to incorporate a whole estate plan uh, with, with an ambition to work out who we are, what we're about, what's our aspiration, uh, what are our vision and values. When you talk about the, the return on investment, um, that really implies there's a financial and a non-financial element. The, the non-financial is what's the cost of me not implementing a whole estate plan um, what are opportunities i don't know about unless i've explored so so by trying to quantify through an audit i know what we have to then leading towards a series of priorities and then on the financial side perhaps best answered more by carl if surely you're going to a bank with uh, an idea and you want to go and borrow money um, if you have a whole estate plan and you have a robust uh, set of uh, priorities and opportunities you want to go and proceed with uh, a bank will presumably give you a much sharper rate uh, if, if you have a clearer understanding of, of where you are and where you want to go. Uh, thanks Ed well yeah I mean that, th that's, a, that's a good link across to Carl nicely done so Carl what, 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 what's your experience of, of, of call them what you like but asset management whole estate plans whole farm plans being um, in, in, in your in your banking life? Yeah, I think um, um, we see them um, and where we see them very much like Ed says, we see them very much on progressive estates and estates that are thinking about a wider vision. And to Ed's, exact, to Ed's point about sharper, sharper pricing, not sure about that, more likely to say <laughs> yes um, is, is probably the result. Um, Certainly what I see on a lot of estates that we go to, especially where there's been change of ownership in succession or something like that, where there's been some impetus to put an estate plan in place, we'll see a period where um, investment is heavy and returns are not necessarily significant at the outset. And that makes it difficult to prove serviceability of debt. So when you've got an estate plan that might go out for a period of time, it might be five, 10, 15, 20, or even more years, we can start to see and build a plan that shows how this debt is going to be serviced and ultimately repaid. And we can buy into that argument. And if some time and effort's been put into articulating what's going to happen, when it's going to happen and how it's going to happen, then, then that gives the bank some real comfort and frankly, an ability to monitor progress and therefore some, you know, some comfort in lending the money at the outset. When people come to me and go, Carl, I'd like to borrow a lot of money because I want to do this, this and this. And we say, well, how are we going to get repaid? And they, they sort of put their hands in the air and go, well, I don't know. That makes it very difficult. Um, so it's much easier when we've got this, this plan in place. Thanks, Carl. That's, that's really interesting. And, and Julian, I'm, I suppose one could be, one could be easy, be easy sort of think from listening to what Carl's had to say that actually we might as well just be talking about a, a forward business plan here or a financially driven plan but i know you've 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 engaged in in a, in a whole estate whole farm planning approach across a whole myriad of, of contexts in, in, in your time and it'd be really interesting to hear from you um how you see the relationship between um a, a, a sort of a strategic roadmap for 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 a business a place-based or a holding-based business which is um a, 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 to me, what an estate, the whole estate plan very much represents, um, fitting alongside and perhaps incorporating that kind of financial and um, uh, forward forecasting and, and, and really high quality um, uh, 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 financial planning um, information and the context that, 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 that Carl's been talking about. Yes, thank you, Rob. I think, I think the answer is you really start with a blank canvas. And you really sit down and focus and think about where is the future for this farm or for this estate? What are we doing at the moment? Uh, could we do what we're doing, do it even better than we are at the moment? What are the challenges we're gonna to have to overcome in the years, to, the years ahead of us? And we know that certainly the farming sector, there are huge challenges looming. What might new enterprises be? What might new ventures be? How might we work with other people? And Carl's already touched on the all important thing is succession planning as well. What is going to be happening 10 or 15 years down the road? I think so it's that taking that fresh approach as to where that farm or that estate is going to be. Obviously, finance is a key driver, 
but you've also very much got to bring in, on board the social and the envir environmental dynamics of those particular businesses as well. But I think also, we'll get in a bit more detail perhaps further on in the discussion, the other key advantage of the whole farm and whole estate plan is that opportunity to engage with other stakeholders. So to engage with the local community, with planning authorities, with the bank, everybody who has a justified interest in what you're doing and wants to be involved with what you're doing. It's much easier to explain to people if you've got a whole farm and whole estate plan rather than just coming along with an individual proposal, piecemeal approach. So it is that holistic approach which is absolutely key to the future. Okay, thank, thanks very much, Julian. And I can see, Ed, you're, you're sort of nodding along to that. But would you like to come in on that? Yeah, the key word there really, Rob, was Julian's um, uh, uh, use of uh, uh, holistic, which I think is absolutely right. You, you, you're not, as an estate, repeatedly coming through with a, with a piecemeal series of applications um, which are totally separate from each other, but rather um, creating a strategic plan, a, a whole estate plan, which um, ideally is effectively communicated across a, a community. So it could be local authority when it comes to planning, um, uh, parish level for uh, shaping and influencing neighbourhood development plans. And it's making oneself totally accountable, um, showing what you have as a vision. And it's a two-way conversation that encourages other people to feed in. So you end up not with continually putting in an application which might uh, rub up a, a community and cause further problems down the line, but actually um, creating some sort of um, a holistic approach um, which feeds in with with the sense of a community with people as well as the environment. Thanks very much. So there's some really interesting threads coming out of there then um, around obviously around a holistic nation, a holistic nature. Um, and, and that for me means um, a, a, a plan and an approach that can really take full account of of every single facet of the business and the asset that the business is is is, is utilizing, um, and that obviously that obviously potentially starts with the ground and the land and the, and the, and the, the natural capital, um, but also very much includes the human capital and the human skills and and, and um, culture and values and attitude to risk that 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 the, that the people involved in the business have. Um, and then the wider context in which the business is is is, is operating, and the, the way that context might change uh, in in the future. Because whilst obviously it's always very tempting to, um, and, and I think um, uh, maps maybe maybe are a bad thing in this in this sense. Or the only place where they are a bad thing is that it's always very interest easy to sort of look at at the defined space of a farm or an estate through a map and see a red line around the edge and think okay well that's the area we're focusing on then it's this bit and um, we don't own that so we don't need to worry about it but you really need in my in my experience uh, and you to, to to fly out um, and really think about the place or the holding you're looking at within a within the broader context uh, that it inhabits both the, the, the social and the political context but also the physical and the topographical and, and the infrastructure context within within which it seats which, which are a critical element uh, of, of all those of all those parts you also talked about um, you talked about planning applications which will come back to you. you talked about use for both you and Julian talked about use for communication and obviously we've talked about um, um, the, 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 the way that it can work, work, work for a banker or a funder. And you talked about accountability, which is a very interesting um, uh, and important point. And one of the early um, uh, conversations I had once upon a time with a, with a whole estate planning client was a slight reluctance from, from on behalf of the senior generation to make a plan because it, exactly because it would make them accountable. Um, uh, and and um, the, 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 well, you know that sense of well, once we've written it down, we're kind of committed to it. Um, uh, was almost seen as a as a, as, a, as, a, as a slight concern in that instance. It shifted very quickly to being a positive, but 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 that accountability, whether it's accountability to self, accountability to to, to, to funding partners, accountability to wider interested parties whether that's wider family whether that's the estate team or the farm team or the community 
Um, it, it, that accountability is a critical element of, of, of the process, I think, and one that I hope will not put people off, but rather will, will allow people to, to really invest, invest their time and energy um, effectively. Um, Julian, I'd like to sort of just pick up a thread around um, uh, where, where, how, 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 how broad a context of, of holding or enterprise these are, these, this approach is applicable to. Because we talk a lot about whole estate plans, and that might mean that some people feel that, 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 that you have to have an all singing, all dancing estate in order to be involved in this conversation or to use this approach. What, what's your experience and your perspective on, on, on that? No, certainly not. I think the, the principles that we've been alluding to behind these plans are, can be applied at any scale of farm or any scale of a state. The ones which I've been actively involved with, okay, if you look in the state context, there was one where, for example, as a result of a long-term master plan, we secured planning consent for residential development outside the local plan system because the money for money derived from that planning application, which was successful, was used on the estate to build a hotel. The profits from the hotel were then used to maintain the grade one listed house. But at the other end of the scale, uh, I dealt with a very small organic farm on the Isle of Wight where I sat down with the owners and we worked through a plan to make sure that was going to be a sustainable business for the future, linked with they're very keen on education and they also want to start a very small low-key um, low leisure enterprise. So they can be equally valid at either end of the scale. I think it's that ability to sit down and plan for the future, to start with that blank canvas and work your way through step by step gradually involving more and more people as you work your way uh, through through the system to end up with a very clear plan which you've then got there for the future to measure against what you're doing your success uh, further down the road because what you must never do with these plans is sit down produce them think what a wonderful document that is and it could be a 40 50 page document it might only be a two or three page document and then put it onto the shelf and say fine we've got that that's done done a 10 year plan off we go this is a document that's going to be a living document for the period of the plan and which you work your way through and adapt accordingly but as to scale no it can suit every type and uh, size of business thank you julian um and that point about being a living document that picks up a a, a, a question we've had in from from um from jeremy murfitt um thank you jeremy are long-term plans difficult to pin down and progress across generations as they may have different needs and aspirations um my experience has suddenly certainly been that actually one of the real sweet spots for sweet spots for whole estate plans or a really good driver for whole estate plans and, and Carl mentioned it as well is on generational change and, and on succession um, and I've certainly had some ex excellent experiences working with the incoming and the kind of outgoing if you like um, uh, generations to to really focus on 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 that very on that very question and essentially get people bought into a vision and a direction of travel um, that then allows um, for for real flexibility of operation and responsiveness um, uh, to changing circumstances uh, down the line because once you've set the sort of the overarching vision and perhaps some guiding principles about well as we respond to change we're going to do it in this way we're going to take these factors into account we're going to make sure that that, that our commitment to um, soil quality or water quality or the social the social vitality of the of the community on the estate um, uh, is maintained or maybe even the specifics around um, we're always going to make sure that we've got at least uh, we've got no no more than 85 percent of the housing stock on the estate let up full open market rent because we want to provide a slightly wider um, uh, impact with our housing stock once you've got those in place then that provides for flexibility um, uh, as you go along Carl, I'm interested in 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 in, in your experience of um, you're a, you're a man and you and your team are constantly reviewing and measuring and monitoring performance with your clients. And I'm interested um, in 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 how you see the role that the the, 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 the monitoring approach to, to an estate plan and how you would keep how your involvement and and, and uh, would would can help to keep those alive, you know, live. Okay, so. Um... I think coming to your coming to the point a minute ago about um, different people inputting and, and 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 succession of things. I think the word is plan, 
it's not written in stone. It's not a tablet of stone. It's an, it's an iterative process. Once this document is up and running, this plan changes and molds and moves along the way. And you have to take everybody with you, but it's a document that allows you to do that. And I think also um, to that similar point, I think I've seen families where we have estate plans and people have come in and looked at those plans, reviewed those plans and decide if they want to be part of that business. Uh, you know, where there isn't a plan in place, people come in and think they know the direction of travel of that business and then get very upset that things aren't going the way they thought they were going. And that causes a lot of falling out. So actually having something there at the outset that allows somebody, a person coming home to go, this is what we thought we were going to do. Well, this is what we think we're going to do. Does everybody buy into that? Yes or no. And you're either on the track, on the journey or you're not. So that iterative process is really important. In terms of the monitoring of it, I think for us as a, as, as a funder, we, we were in a position that we can, in inverted commas, keep people honest. Um, this is what we are expecting to see. What progress have you made to this? Why has it not happened? Why has this happened instead? And it, it forms part of our discussion on an annual, biannual, you know, more regularly in some situations, um, discussions with those clients to say, this is the basis that we lent you the money. You were going to build this housing estate and you were going to sell it on. If it's delayed by two or three years, that's, that's, that's fine. You know, you're making progress in the right direction. But if you suddenly decide, actually, we're not going to sell the housing estate, we're going to build it out ourselves and keep it all. Well, that, that's a material change. And as a financier, we have a, you know, we have a duty of care to discuss and to decide whether, whether we want to be part of that plan or not. So keeping people honest, really, is what we try to do. Does that answer the question, Rob? Um, well, I think it provides a very interesting perspective on it. Thank you. And it just sort of bashes the accountability drum again, which, which, which is really helpful. Um, Ed, what's your thoughts about, about um, timeline? Um, I mean, one of the things that, that I think, you know, is a major um, uh, um, asset in, in, in any land-based business, particularly when, when you're engaging in, in, a, in a conversation about change, is that you, a, a land-based business inevitably can take a long-term view. It can take a longer-term view than most other um, business and, and, and certainly most other, other developers. Um, and some of, the, some of the, the, the plans that I've been involved in producing have, have deliberately been aligned with local plan timelines because they've been about or that they've had a real purpose around planning change in them. Others have been much shorter. They've been like a three-year or a five-year process because it's been about initiating an initial process of change um, and moving from sort of um, the starting point on, on, on the board of snakes and ladders to the end of the first line or whatever it might be. There's a very specific set of objectives in there. Do you have thoughts or a view on, on, on timeline and, 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 and from, from your wider experience and conversations? Timelines are very important because although you have a plan, unless you actually start hanging meaningful dates on them, um, we all know that uh, in a business or a family, there are procrastinators. Uh, and so um, making yourself accountable as to what's going to happen and when makes people um, t turn ideas into action. So, so that's very important. Um, we, we've just undertaken, for example, uh, a natural capital uh, assessment. Um, we we are looking at a 20 year plan. So as, as part of that, we are having an active discussion about where we want to be in in five, 10, 15 and 20 years time. Otherwise, this thing is just going to quietly drift on um, w without any real relevance. So, yeah, timelines. Absolutely. Um, uh, because uh, you need to make yourself accountable. Yes, to the bank and, and those around you. And, and um, it, it, it's, it's a continuous uh, modification. I mean, who would have thought? COVID would have come along, bank rates would have dropped to 10 basis points, uh, world of uncertainty. So timelines, they can be amended, but at least it forms part of a wider plan. Thanks, Ed. That's, that's great. Now, I've got some, we've got some threads, sort of strands coming in from the questions now. We've got one around, which is clearly a planning strand, which I, which I would like to pick up with, with you, Julian, in a minute. We've got one around... Um, uh, the use of estate plans as, as to develop a sort of a wider family constitution or, or around governance and, and maybe succession planning, which, which um, uh, is, is a very interesting point, which, which we'll pick up. And then we've, we've got one, one around, around natural capital and, and, and using, using the whole estate plan as a, as, as, as a, as a um, the means of, of look, starting to look around, around um, 
carbon sequestration, carbon offsetting. So we'll come to each of those in turn. Julian, if we could start with the, with the, with the, with the, with the planning strand. Um, I've, I've often described whole estate plans or whole farm plans as kind of the mother of all pre-apps because they are absolutely brilliant at positioning and explaining and providing the rationale for individual or a series of development projects within with with it with, with, with to come forward from a from a land based from a land based business um john hoys asked um are local planning authorities beginning to demand or expect whole estate plans to to, to be embedded within their local plans i've had got a bit of experience with that but i'd be really interested to hear um, your wider experience b b before i offer my yeah, thank you. I've not actually heard them demanding them as such. I think the good thing is that they're becoming more attuned to them. Because I've always explained to people that if you're going to talk to a local authority about the whole farm, the whole estate plan, you're not going in to talk to people at development control. Because development control is there to what it says it's to, is to control development. And that's where your planning application goes, is to development control. You're going in to talk to the senior planning officers who are looking at the long-term plan for their particular localities. They're taking a strategic view as well. And therefore what you're doing aligns with what they're doing. So I think it's all important to engage with the local authority at a very early stage, if your plan is going to involve any significant planning applications whatsoever, and get them to understand exactly where your farm and your estate is coming from, and to clearly demonstrate to them that you can bring economic, social and environmental benefits to the wider community, which will hopefully align with their local plans. But to do that, you do actually need to have that word development in various different scales, but you can't set in a farm or estate and aspect and just expect it to sit there and remain unchanged. It does need to develop. And if you're gonna bring all those benefits, they've gotta be derived from a business which is economically sustainable. And that will often mean development. I think you can talk all that through with those senior planning officers who again engage in a similar process for the local authority rather than measured just against one planning application in complete isolation. Yeah, thank you, Julia. I, I, I completely in, in, endorse that. Um, um, demand, no, haven't experienced demand yet, but definitely seeing more and more invitation. Um, uh, and, and really local authorities creating hooks within within local within local plans um to which invite uh, or create the opportunity for for whole farm plans or whole estate plans to come forwards as a as a means of um providing a broader context and really uh, a, a better understanding and rationale for for development pros, proposals and in some instances to do so in in, a, in order to help the local authority respond in a slightly different way than they might to a one-off application from uh, in an isolated circumstance so so I, I completely completely agree with you and one of the key things for me about the holistic nature of whole estate or whole farm plans when one's looking at using them to to, to promote and explain and communicate um, a, the, the development proposals is the interdependencies between um, the, the, the several developments and the wider business of the estate you can really really brilliantly explain how how the output from one site will contribute towards the objectives uh, in another theme uh, which will support the, the 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 outcome in another place within a within the holistic holistic interconnected element um, just that, just to add to that rob just to add to that yes and, and if if you are going to end up securing consents which are outside what might deem to be the local plan and even national planning guides for example if they're going that one step beyond and they're actually creating a precedent on the face of it because they're giving you that consent if that is supported by that master plan that whole plan for that farm or estate that then gives them a justification to support it if anybody else comes along wanting consent for something along similar lines they've also got to go through that due process so it gives them that opportunity to stretch the bounds of what they're prepared to give consent for because they understand the bigger picture. Yeah, absolutely. That's definitely been our experience. Thank you for that, Julian. Um, this question now about wider family constitution. So Jody Downs, thank you, Jody, has asked, do you consider an estate plan as part of a wider family constitution and succession plan 
or is it purely to facilitate access to external funding? So I'm going to come to, to you first, Ed, on that, if I may. Um, uh, please ignore my telephone. Um, Ed, let me pass to you quickly so you can get rid of my phone. Oh, it's gone. So I'm going to, I'm going to pass to you, Ed, um, and then, Carl, I'm going to bring that question on to you, if I might, um, uh, for your perspective as well. Thanks, Rob. Uh, there were two questions really within that. No, it's absolutely not exclusively uh, for, for, for the banking side. Um, it, it is uh, a whole estate plan which can dovetail and be very complementary to a family constitution um, and it identifies the broad direction of travel um, and it uh, also provides roles and responsibilities um, particularly at a time of succession so there are no disagreements the, the principle being that if everyone is aware of what is happening uh, and, and why and how um, equitable or not uh, at least at least it is uh, uh, open uh, and, and discussed uh, rather than potentially um, uh, at the very worst case when someone's passed away uh, and uh, there's no certainty provided whatsoever. So absolutely, the, the, the two fit together. Um, could it be all in one? I, I'm not sure. I don't have any visibility on that, but conceivably, yes, probably, Rob. Thank you. And Carl, your, your thoughts? Yeah, I agree, agree entirely with that. And I, I, have seen them, I have seen them integrated, you know, obviously um, parts of it are used for different purposes and pieces will be put in and pulled out as necessary depending on the audience and I think that's important when an estate plan is produced and it's produced in a way that, that sections of it read well um, without other sections so that we can we can share it um, externally and internally and in, in various different places. And the other place that I've seen it as well as succession we talked about quite a lot is actually succession of staff you know we see estate CEOs or land agents coming in we can give them something that's very clear um, at interview stage even and say this is where we're going is this for you you know do you really understand this and it, that can really help find the right person to come in and and drive drive the estate forward um, but to the specific yeah absolutely it can be can be with the wider family constitution and I think I think I love to see family constitutions I think they're great but that would be probably an annex to an estate plan and help help um, produce that plan I think that would be my experience Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's interesting. There's a couple of things. The internal external piece I want to come back to because that's really important. Um, and, and the recruitment piece. I'm really glad you made that point. Uh, I think you've made it twice now and I absolutely totally agree with you. And one of, one of the things when, we, when we're trying to work out um, and work with, work with particularly estate principles, um, uh, one of the things in this whole estate plan, whole fund plan does really well is help you understand the the skills you don't have and that you're going to need to do the things you want you've decided you want to do um and one of the toughest things i think in 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 the landed landed um business sector is 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 employment is recruitment getting the right people in place and, and empowering them to work with the with the shareholders if you like to 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 to, to take everybody in the in, down the road that they want to go in and, and um if there's really you know one skill that that sets hugely successful land-based businesses apart from the less successful i think it's the ability of the shareholders the owners to be really really good employers um, and to really enable and support high quality staff who let's face it are never ever going to be able to own the asset that they are contributing so much to um, uh, and this this transparency of direction of travel um, culture, value, as a recruitment aid, I absolutely agree a whole estate plan is a brilliant thing. Um, in terms of family constitution, Jody, we, we had one particularly very successful conversation, we've done this more than once, um, where as part of the whole estate planning piece, we actually ended up putting in place a very clear decision making protocol across the different generations, so that there was, there was, a, there was a written constitution that said, okay, um, uh, decisions that d decisions of this type that have this gravity have to be taken by the whole ownership group but decisions of this type which 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 come under that threshold there's total mandate for the executive which includes the estate team and the and the new generation to take those decisions without reference to the, the wider ownership group provided they are demonstrably moving 
the business in the direction set out within the whole estate plan, provided they fit with those objectives, they hit those guiding principles, then you have a complete decision making mandate. And that that blend of the, well, that using using the the direction of travel, the vision, the guiding principles, the objectives, the clarity, the accountability set within the whole estate plan, and 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 setting that against the decision making protocol for a multi multi tiered uh, sort of multi shareholder interest owned business with with non executive interests, shareholding interests, informed and less informed. Um, executive was really, really powerful, and is something I think is is is, is potentially extremely powerful indeed. Um, just picking up the strand around around um, internal and external documents, or perhaps sections that are used internally and sections that are used externally. I, more and more of the conversations that I'm having now around this sort of work, we're looking at almost producing make two or maybe even three. Um, uh, documents we, 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 or, or versions of, of a document we've got we've got the, 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 the business plan element which is all about the team setting their plan and, and this is the nuts and bolts of taking it forward we might then have the 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 communication tool for a planning process and then we might have a different kind of communication tool for a a, a community conversation or 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 a, or a recruitment process um, so don't feel my my view certainly is don't feel that you have to commit to a single version of one document that then you have to make available to everybody you've got to have a consistent thread between them and they've all got to work as one and they've got to be coherent but it's absolutely possible to have a um, a, a document for the team um, and an extract or a high level summary or whatever it might be a, a perspective of that which you use for external communications um uh, julian have you got any any views on that yeah i certainly agree with that because um there are elements of it which obviously you may want to keep confidential at various stages to, to certain to certain uh, or different audiences but i think well, the key is to make sure yeah the the overarching vision within your plan is common throughout and your overall objectives are common so everyone can understand exactly what those are and you can then add the detail as as required I think going back to the uh, internal consultation, I think in many farm businesses and estate businesses, there are a lot of family members who are not day to day involved and they sit outside and often they may be sitting outside being perfectly happy or they may be sitting outside feeling somewhat aggrieved or got good ideas and don't know what, where to put those ideas forward. So I think this planning process is the ideal opportunity to involve everybody within the family what whatever their connections may be to get their thoughts to get their views and to bring them on board and the other one which i've used to good effect on an on a state scale is where within an estate you've got a number of let farms is to involve the tenant farmers because they have visions as to what they want to do they may have for example i want a state we dealt with where they weren't milking sheep and they wanted to set up a cheese making business so we brought that into the estate plan so, the part, so again, when talking to the planning authority, there were certain requirements to provide new facilities for that facility to help the tenant. And we then, of course, got into the debate about who was going to finance and how was that going to work and how we're going to build that into the estate's uh, cash flow forecast and requirements of the bank to help the tenant to actually produce that um, new building to, to produce the milk. So again, all sorts of things start to come to light as you begin to go through the process of preparing your plan or whatever scale it may be yeah great thanks julian and that that i think one of my sort of one of my ambitions i think is is to really is, is to is to pull a um a, a whole estate plan which has got whole farm plans within it so that, that across across the estate there can be a coherent um uh sort of um structure or plan or framework that that deals with the estate elements as well as the farm elements and and, and i'm hoping that, that maybe natural capital elms cluster groups catchment groups whatever it might be might be the, the the opportunity to sort of make that sort of really exciting thing happen um and i'd like to kind of focus a bit now on on the natural capital on on the environmental enhancement on on the the way in which um, uh, that that strand 
um, if I'm allowed to call it a strand, I, 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 people might disagree with that. That element can be um, uh, uh, incorporated or, or, or how a whole estate plan, a whole farm plan approach can really now be leveraged in, in, in taking people's thinking forwards about how they shift from, from a, 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 a basic payment driven structure to, uh, to an Elms driven structure, uh, how, they, how they think about balance between food production and, and, and environmental enhancement, whether there are opportunities, you know, what sort of opportunity might natural capital uh, payment for public goods and services, ecosystem services present within a, within a broader estate context how you work that into your plan. There's, there's been a specific couple of specific questions about woodland um, that have come through and how you might incorporate um, woodland planning for woodland or woodland management plans within a whole estate plan. Um, and I know, Ed, that you're very much thinking about your about all this and you've, 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 you've completed your natural capital audit. So I'd be really interested in, in your thoughts on how you see what, now you've got your natural capital audit. What you plan to do with that next, and how you see how you see that being incorporated within your broader your broader strategic estate plan. Rob, I'll, I'll probably um, link that question with your previous one. And so, if I start with the internal external, uh, and then go use that to answer the second part. Um, internally, you've got a document, and there are aspects of it which are probably um, for for family and uh, a, a professional advisor eyes only. Um, it doesn't really have any, any purpose though, unless there is a, um, a simplified sanitized version, which is shared externally across uh, communities that we just discussed. Um, Peter Wiggins Davies from uh, Reevesby Estate, for example, was talking about a golden thread that runs throughout uh, an estate, regardless of where you are uh, on the estate, who you're talking to, or what aspect of the business. And he's absolutely right. Um, my passion is increasingly natural capital. So in answer to your second question, I see a, a growing opportunity in a time of broader political and uh, social uncertainty um, to uh, draw in uh, conversations with existing farm tenants to say this is the direction of travel that I'd like to go into um, but I want you to to hop on and and, and join me as part of this uh, adventure for the next 20 years so it's um, a collaborative approach uh, looking at uh, different aspects that we have yet to identify as priorities it's probably uh, flooding and energy and um, biodiversity uh, I suspect they'll probably feature uh, at the top of the shopping list um, how we communicate that is, is uh, we have instigated a series of uh, signposts, signboards uh, around the estate uh, at prominent junctions on public footpaths. So as, as effective external communication, um, people in the village know who we are, what we're about, what we're trying to achieve and why. So it's that, um, it's, it's that Simon Sinek's um, uh, idea of the golden circle, having a purpose so people know what we're about and trying to achieve. Um, and, and it delivers enormous um, uh, uh, scale uh, locally, but, but also, you know, you've got social media, uh, Instagram and Twitter, um, which I'm not terribly good at, but there are multi-level approaches that information like this can be shared. No, yes, thank you. So caught me slightly on the hop there, making some notes, my apologies. Um, Carl, the, the, you've got a, a, a really great um, overview, probably a better overview than any of us um, sat here, given given the, the, the breadth of diversity of your book and, and, and of your wider agricultural book. What sort of vibes are you getting from um, uh, from from your customers around the the um, uh, the reality of of natural capital and ecosystem services as a as a as a as a a viable revenue stream and a and a monetized enterprise uh, going going forwards um vast confusion um i think people at the moment generally are keen to know more and keen to try to access it at the moment the the general view i'm finding is that because bps is still around that the economics don't quite look right yet um people that are looking further out are probably thinking that the economics might look might look reasonable um, but certainly for the moment 
it's um, the economics don't feel right for people at 20, 30 pound a ton. It just doesn't, just doesn't stack up against arable farming. Um, I think what, what most people are trying to do is get themselves in a position that they understand what they've got and carrying out that audit and understanding what they could do and what they would be prepared to do. And this is, I think, where estate plans come in really, really well, is actually sitting down and working out where we are today, working out where we could go within the constraints of what we're prepared to do. You know, you're not going to put everything down in forestry in East Anglia. That's just not going to happen. Um, so working out what people can do and where they can go. In terms of actually getting into those schemes and, and, and starting to dip a toe in the water, very few yet. Very few yet. We've seen a couple of little attempts at bilateral agreements and obviously the first carbon auctions have just started, but um, it's really, really small steps at the moment. So um, a lot of it's about measuring, understanding, and working out what they can do. And that's the progressive ones. Everybody else is just putting their hands on their head and, um, and hoping that, that somebody's going to tell them what to do. Thank you, Carl. That's really, that's really interesting. Julian, what, any, any thoughts from you on experiences on that, on that, on that area? Yes, I agree with Carl. I think it is very much early days. But I know what I'd say in the context of a whole farm or whole estate plan is in terms of an estate, then obviously, yes, you're looking at possibly in hand farming, but already it's also talking to your tenant farmers. So you begin to see how the whole picture might unfold across the estate. But at a farm scale, picking up on your point, Rob, looking over the, over the hedge. So if you're going to be producing a plan for your farm, why not actually talk to the neighbours about what they're going to be doing? How do they see themselves embracing these schemes? And you may end up, you know, I'm already looking at one example uh, on the Ridgeway of bringing a group of farmers together under a cluster and getting them all working together. Because actually that way you can secure additional funds because you're bringing greater benefit. You're certainly having greater benefit for the environment and for wildlife over a larger area. And if you just look at your farm in complete isolation and you're thinking about planting a wood there, for example, on the boundary, well, what's your neighbour going to be doing? Would it make sense to actually have at least their scheme mar marrying it with your scheme even if they're two separate schemes but when you put the two together you can see how they might actually work to create those greater benefits for the environment which may well actually help you to secure the funding so don't just look at your little bit of england in complete isolation do talk to those around you find out what you're going to be doing for the future and then you can go to the funding bodies you can go to the local community and say look this is what we're doing this is what land ownership, land occupation is all about, and these are the benefits we can bring you by this group of farms, group of estates working together. Yeah, thanks, Julian. I, I, I do think we've got a, there is a very exciting opportunity ahead of us around, around clusters of, of some form or another, and particularly the, um, uh, the coming together of, a, of, of, of um, uh, I suppose landlord and tenant is a clean way of explaining it. Not, not my favourite choice of language necessarily, but coming together of 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 of, of a land-based sort of um, uh, an aggregated group of land-based businesses that 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 that, um, that 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 can that can work alongside one another. I think the other point that that, that Carl made you made, which I'm very grateful for, and I think just just to expand on a moment that working out what we've got, what we might do with it, what we, what we might be prepared to do with it is, is, is absolutely where we're at. And, and that's where this holistic whole estate, whole farm, whole enterprise, whole business planning approach is critical. Because if you're simply looking down at a, 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 a thematic silo, let's do our natural capital plan, then you're thinking purely, or you're making choices around this kind of natural capital or that kind of natural capital. You're not, you're not extending the implication analysis to the social and to the, to the other economic elements of the business and to the objectives of the, business, the owners and to the, the, the views of the, of, of, of the key related and interested parties. That's why the whole, the whole, that's why they're called whole, that's why the whole thing is, is so vital. Um, but if ever there was a was an was a, was an opportune catalyst for really understanding your your asset and understanding the 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 the, the, the sort of um, the relativity of the opportunity and the constraints from that asset, both in terms of the physical, um, the, the the natural capital, 
the financial, the investment, the skills, you know, th this, this shift surely now that we're looking at over the next two to three years is, is a major catalyst for any land-based business of whatever type and whatever, whatever flavor. Um, uh, Ed, there's a, there's a question in here that's absolutely got your name all over it. Um, and it's from Liz Smales. Liz, thank you for this. Um, and Liz writes, my experience is from the international hospitality sector. And we would have to submit monthly reports for each hotel and physically answer quarterly reviews to owners board committee by regional representation, then a big annual jamboree. This was a great way to keep on track, answer and justify decisions, but also learn from others on best practice. In response to living documents, and Rob's question just now about monitoring, is there a similar structure in place for rural businesses? Over to you, Nuffield Scholar, Mr. Barnes. Thank you, Rob. And Liz, thank you. Gosh, what a great question. You've really put me on the spot. Um, most estates, I suspect, would meet up on a regular basis. Um, I'm not sure jamboree is, is the right technical term, um, but probably in a formal capacity to review how they have performed and where they want to be heading. Um, just as an aside, if you look at these listed companies, they, they are meeting regularly with, with shareholders and investors to uh, make themselves accountable and uh, explain uh, how they are performing. Um, hospitality sector is, is um, in, in your experience, um, uh, meeting regularly. I, I just wonder whether in the rural sector, and it might be slightly controversial to say this, Rob, but um, if, if we are still essentially seen as private businesses, but receiving public money for public goods, would taxpayers potentially want to see whole estate plans? Would they want to see uh, a natural capital audit? Would they want to see estates and farms working collaboratively in order to try and um, uh, justify why they're getting paid? So, so could, could, are we talking about potentially increased regulation, um, but also um, justifying uh, income? Uh, from someone like the RPA, if we can, if we can show an ISO accredited whole estate plan, does that answer the question? Well, it's a cracking answer. Um, Liz will tell us whether it answers the question or not, but uh, it's 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 a great answer, and I, and I and, and I can hear a sharp intake of breath with 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 with, with you suggesting some kind of linkage between um, uh, Elms payments and and the whole estate plans, but um, uh, you know. You can see a, you can see a, a sort of a, that goes back to the accountability point. Um, you can certainly see massive merits in in and uh, you know what would be different than than from from uh, an estate producing its whole estate plan and then providing an annual monitoring report um, against it to so something that happens in the corporate space and the, and, and and the PLC space and the local authority space every day and every and every year. Why why should the rural sector? be any different, particularly if it's continuing to be a significant recipient of, 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 of revenue, I'm going to say revenue, um, for the sale and delivery of, of public goods and public goods and services. Um, uh, we are, we're nudging up now to sort of the, 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 the be edge of our time. And there are a couple of specific questions. Um, I just like to, uh, to respond to if I can. Um, and, and the, 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 the the, the back to the timeline question again, and we might just try and um, uh, get a bit more detailed on this. So Charlotte's asked what period should an estate plan cover the next 10, 25, 50 years? Ben's asked, is there, is there, should there be an agreed series of set review dates um, for monitoring, updating, um, but also an agreement to trigger reviews of plans where there are substantive changes in externalities? Um, I know I've, I kind of covered you know, said you, you you can kind of make the timeline up to fit your specific purposes, but which was a, perhaps a bit of a, um, a, a too easy a response earlier. Julian, I'm going to put you on the spot and ask you if you think there is a um, a, a, a sort of an ideal timeline, um, or what what the kind of the, the, the range of timelines that, that you've you've tended to use um, over your experience have been. I think the plans which I've been involved in putting in place on farms and estates have tended to be in the sort of range of 10 to 15 years because that's a period which people can actually begin to comprehend and understand and where you can begin to see what might be beginning to evolve ahead of you. I think once you start sort of the 50-year vision then that's real blue sky thinking 
nothing wrong with some blue sky thinking, but I think to try and put that back into the plan and have that length of vision gets quite difficult for people to actually understand and to deal with. So I think if you've got that, I think the short, the, the, the initial periods can be much more certain. So you can have a very clear five year, you then got your next stage, five to 10 years, and you hope to achieve this, then 10 to 15. Beyond that, you're really just looking at some broad principles. But I think the other point there, well, the key thing is to keep it under review and have a proper annual regular review process. I'm very fortunate in being um, in chairing a number of um, estate and farm management boards, family management boards, which involve trustees and external advisors and things. And one of the things that we bring to the table is the master plan, the whole plan. I mean, it's kept under review. And the, the scale of the review varies at different stages during the process. But certainly once a year, it's very important to sit down and really analyze what have we achieved, what are we going to achieve, what have we failed to achieve, etc., and really make sure that becomes a living working document. But I would be saying 10 to 15 years would be my sort of time frame I'd work on. Thank you, Julian, very much. And um, Carl, from a from a banking and funding perspective, what, what, what's your view on uh, on timelines? Um, and please feel free to, to 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 put as many it depends on as as, as you like. <laughs> no, the, the, I, it depends. No, clearly, no. Um, I think for me, um, it depends on what the triggers are. Um, you know, if somebody's coming to me and saying I want a twenty five year loan, um, I'd quite like a twenty five year horizon to see. If somebody's coming to me asking for a five-year bridge or a three-year bridge or whatever, then, then frankly, a two, three, four, five-year plan is, is, is absolutely adequate. Um, but again, I think we, you talked earlier about local plans and such like. If, if, you're cha if you're, one of your targets is to get into the local plan and then get some planning permission, necessarily that's going to be, on, in some occasions, 15 to 20 years. So we need to adjust that plan to to, to as Julian said, so exactly with the timescales of, of what's going on. Um, but certainly for me, I, I like to see a good solid, small, just good solid short term plan and a robust medium plan, and then a bit of blue sky thinking and um, a, 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 bit, a bit more hope in the longer term, but certainly a direction of travel for that longer term. So I would be with Julian, but probably to the slightly longer end, the 15 to 20 years. Um, but equally, if somebody's going to repay me in five years because they're going to extract gravel out of the ground within that period, well, there's not a lot of point for me in going out beyond that five-year period. It's nice to see, but it's not a need to see. Thanks, Carl. That's, that's really brilliantly pragmatic. Thank you. Ed, what are your thoughts and, and, and the experiences from your wider European odyssey and, you know, on, on, on different time horizons? Yeah. I think Julian got it right, 10 to 15. Um, there is more detail in the early years. And as you go further out, um, it can uh, generally be a bit looser. Um, there were a couple of estates I saw in, there were seven estates I saw in Denmark and, and, and their view was that um, the financial advisor and or banker was an absolutely central person um, who, who would attend all the meetings as an independent uh, professional. Um, and, and, and they were, providing their, their perspective on where they thought uh, lending rates and financial markets were. Clearly, if you go out 20 years, we have no idea. Um, uh, and uh, if you know your land agent will, will give a view and, and your solicitor will give a view on something else, depending on um, who, who's in government and what the implication is for a possible change in tax rates or, uh, or rural matters. So um, uh, waiting more towards the shorter end, uh, less at the outset, uh, less at the further end. Um, probably does also depend on, on where succession plan is that we touched on earlier um, and how likely uh, that is to occur. Yeah, I thank you. I, I think, I mean, I think we're all pretty much in, in, a, in a similar space here. And that last point that you made, um, Ed, is really, is really interesting. One, one, one place I've, I've been involved, the, the principles specifically said, well, we want, we want this timeline because um, we do not want the next generation necessarily to be bound into um, some of the key sort of strategic and, and objective decisions that we're making now. So it need it needs to be. We want we, we need we want a ten to twelve year horizon, but we don't want it to extend much further because we want there to be space for the next generation to 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 to, to be able to create their own plan and have flexibility to do that. But but the, the theme that's coming through there about really thinking through and tailoring 
tailoring timeline to uh, to deliver the objectives. What is the plan for? What do you want to achieve is absolutely critical. But also doing that within a broader understanding of the context in which in which the plan is going to operate and which is going to seek to deliver context. Again, I would stress context is 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 all all important. Um, and it makes perfect sense strategically. If the plan is about achieving certain things, then you you need to align the timeline of the plan to the same to to, to, to those timelines that you're dealing with. But always, always with with the recognition and, and the understanding that that you know land things take time to change in a land based scenario, and we're not in a annual, biannual, triannual uh, performance cycle. Uh, uh, you know, we're, we're in it for the longer term. We're, we've got a longer, a longer view. Um, that is that is twelve forty five. I am uh, hugely grateful to you, three of you, for um, giving us your time today. I've, I've really enjoyed myself. I'd like to go on for another hour, but that's not what we agreed. Julian, thank you very much. Ed, thank you very much. Carl, thank you very much. I hope that those of you who've who've been involved and have been listening have have, have found some use. Um, do do um, point this in the direction of friends and, and colleagues. Uh, obviously, you can you can revisit, or you they can come and find this anytime they want on the Land Management 2.0 website. Um, and um, any of you who are interested who haven't yet come across the Rural Land Management um, network uh, and growing network and conversation on the Slack channel, um, uh, I would heartily recommend that to you. There's some really good conversations going on in there very easy to join up to. I'm hoping that there is still a link on the Land Management 2.0 website, um, but we'll certainly make sure there is if there isn't. So gents, many thanks. Um, and um, those of you who have asked questions that we haven't directly answered, we will provide some feedback on the website in 